That's Jim Kendall on our new organ. Sounds great, doesn't it? And the more he plays that, the better it's going to sound. I want to welcome everybody that is here today and everybody that's on the internet. Welcome and uh, thank you for joining us today. We've got some new faces I see, some uh, those that have not been here yet. Uh, we are glad you're back. Um, today we are celebrating two things today. We are celebrating Pastor's Appreciation Day. If you've been with me here at Clinton Christian Church for any number of years, you know that I choose a Sunday in October to just tell you how much I appreciate everything that you do for the church and for me and for, for everybody. everybody. And uh, not that I don't appreciate you every single day of the year, I just feel it's very necessary and very, uh, well, just, I'm just going to say necessary to let you know specifically on one day of the year how much I do appreciate you. We're also celebrating stewardship. This is Stewardship Sunday as well, so we're going to take Pastor Appreciation Day and stewardship, and we're going to merge them together somehow, some way. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet, but we will do that today, and um, we are so glad that you're here today. Um, and we have come here to worship God, so let us now do that. Please join me in the call to worship. A love that never ceases. You know, Dan's not back there today. So. But Dan had to doctor the PowerPoint earlier, so maybe it's Dan. Pardon? Hey, a love that never ceases. A creativity that, that designed the, the universe. universe. A hope that cannot be quenched. A pursuit, a pursuit of, reconciliation, of reconciliation no matter what the cost. These are the things that are of God. Then let, then let us, us worship, worship God. God. Our hymn of praise from up here. Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. We
Thank you, ladies and Jim. So there's a Phillips head screwdriver up here. I'm not sure if that was to be a part of this or organ construction. I'm not sure, but I'll just. Yeah, there you go. Someone could already say, well, Dan, you've already screwed up this morning. So uh, no, so I'll hang, I'll take the PowerPoint blame all the go because I tweaked it across the hall, left it open there. She couldn't fully run it. So anyway. With that said, it takes a lot, of, uh, a lot of folks to make Sundays happen around here, and we're just thankful for all those that uh, do that, whether or not it's to get things out over the internet, Facebook, and live spot, or just hear the mechanics of our uh, return to church as much as it is, and uh, we're just glad that you're all here with us this morning. Uh, Florence, good to see you. I didn't see you sneak in a while ago. Hope Donald's okay. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the church. We thank you for those who have ventured out to return to church. And we totally uh, want to be with those who are with us at home on Facebook and, and StreamSpot. Whether we choose to worship here, there, or out in the middle of a field, uh, we know that we can talk to God and, and um, receive your blessings. Lord, we just ask that in this time you be with, continue to be with us in this time of COVID, in this time of harvest. We just ask that you keep everyone safe and give our leaders uh, wisdom and, and strength. And Lord, we come to you to pray as your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. Well, we're glad to be back, and the McGuire sisters have a kind of a little new jazzy number. We bought two new tunes uh, to kind of spark things up a little bit, and we hope you like this rendition of This Little Light of Mine.
Thank you, ladies and Jim. You know, you start naming names, you forget somebody, and you get in trouble. But uh, it's also good to see Marilyn Gover back here with us this morning. I don't think she's been here with us for a while. And the Royals as well. And the Chiefs. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kenny and Sherry, glad to have you back, too. Again, I'm going to stop at that. Good to see the Wesley Pew here this morning, too. I guess I could start, and that would be part of, the, part of the sermon. Would you back it out of the, your time? But anyway. Join me in the scripture, please. 1 Corinthians 1, 4 through 9, probably in too small of a font because that was Dan's last minute PowerPoint tweet back there. I am thankful to God for all the time for you. I am thankful for the loving favor God has given to you because you belong to Christ Jesus. He has made your lives rich in every way. Now you have power to speak for him. He gave you good understanding. This shows that what I told you about Christ and what he could do for you has been done in your lives. You have the gifts of the Holy Spirit that you need while you wait for the Lord Jesus Christ to come again. Christ will keep you strong until he comes again. No blame will be held against you. God is faithful. He chose you to be joined together with his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you, Dan. What we're witnessing in the scripture today is, of course, a letter from Paul to one of the many churches that Paul planted. Paul, after uh, Saul became Paul, Paul went throughout the land, went to different cities, and planted churches. That was what Paul did. He went to uh, Galatia, he went to Rome, went to Philippi. This one he went to, um, where are we? Corinth, thank you. That's my uh, Bible educated son there. Um, this one he was in Corinth and he of course planted a church in Corinth. And uh, he's writing this letter to them. He, he, he usually starts out his letters, um, I love you guys, um, you guys are great. You know, God has blessed you, blah, blah, blah. He kind of does the what I call the manager sandwich. He says nice things about him at the start. Then he gets to the real crux of why he's writing this letter because usually why Paul is writing a letter is something is going wrong in that church. So he'll say, you guys are doing great. You need to work on this. Let's all work on this together because you guys are great. That's my, you know, you got the... Bread, you're great. The bread, you're great. And the meat of, now nah, you're not so good. But uh, Paul was a wonderful church planner. I am not by any means going to compare myself to Paul. Paul was a great man, a great man of God. I am just a lowly, lowly shepherd. I'll, I'll be a shepherd from last week. So, um, but I do want to emphasize something that Paul said to this church in Corinth, and I want to say it to you right now. I thank God all the time for each and every one of you. I am so thankful to be the pastor here at this church. I am so blessed that you all are willing to um, discover your relationship with Jesus Christ, to delve into it, to work on building it, and you are allowing me to be a part of that and to ride along with you because I am just like you guys, probably even worse. I am a real piece of work sometimes. But that's why we're here, right? That's what we do this for, right? We want to build our relationship with Jesus Christ. So as I said today, today is my rendition of this is... I'm not, gonna, I'm not floating my own horn. This is Pastor Appreciation Month. I don't know why we get a whole month. You know, you guys tell me you appreciate me all the time. But 
I take a day during the month to tell you how much I appreciate you. And if, for your English majors, that's why there is a po an apostrophe yes there. Pastor's appreciation. This is my appreciation for you all. And I've got, uh, of course, um, I am the Gallagher of pastors, so I have something to, uh, to use. And we're going to go through some different steps on, on uh, what I appreciate of you. And the first one is outreach. You might think, well, because of the COVID and all that we were shut down for three months and now we're reopening and we're getting back to where we were, that no outreach happened through this church. And this is absolutely wrong. That would be absolutely wrong. We did, re we did outreach all the way through there. Um, and all, all the way through the months that we were closed down, and we continue to do our out, outreach here. We help homeless with night stay. We help them with food. We help them with people with utilities. We help, uh, we still get to the Samaritan Center. Um, we're collecting cake mixes out here. Did you see that? That's for the Samaritan Center. We continue. We did uh, Festival of Sharing. We, uh, we've done, you know, all kinds of things. Nothing in the, in the aspect of outreach has changed from this church. If anything, it's gotten better. Now, the problem with the COVID is that I, nor the elders, nor really anybody can go visit anybody in the hospital or the nursing homes. And I've really tried to stay away from going into people's houses because I just don't want to spread the COVID. I just don't want to do that. I don't want to be the reason why somebody has COVID-19. But those things are kind of opening up a little bit more. I, I visit, I'm visiting people in homes and will do again. I have some people this week that I need to visit. Um, I got to go say a prayer with Charlotte before her surgery on Friday morning. Uh, we met at six o'clock in, in Lee Summit. Um, so and such, and I've, you know, I've got to do a little bit of that. Can't go visit, though. I just, we haven't been able to do that yet, but that's okay. Um, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. So the outreach has not changed whatsoever. Whatsoever, the outreach has not changed, except maybe it got a little better. As you all know, I love puzzles, so I, I built me a puzzle this week to... to uh, now if I can just put it together. There we go. Volunteers. Dan kind of mentioned it from the, from the lectern this morning. This service right here could not happen without volunteers. I don't know if you know it or not, but there's always two people back there. One's running the camera, one's running the sound. We have worship leaders that volunteer to do the worship. We have what we call guardian angels. Bet you didn't know that somebody, after you sit down and after the worship service starts, somebody goes around and makes sure all the doors are locked so we're safe in this sanctuary here. The McGuire sisters have done a wonderful job. They're volunteers. We're not paying them a dime to come up and sing, but they're doing a super job and we appreciate that. Um, volunteers, the, 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 the board... The church board, we continue to meet on a monthly basis. We talk, we discuss, we discuss, are we going to be able to open up a little further? When can we sing? When can we do this? We're going over this every month. They are all volunteers. Committee chairs, we have committees meeting now. Christian Ed's meeting. CIS is getting ready to meet. Um, uh, other, other things. Other, other committees are getting ready to meet. We're working on budgets. We're getting our budgets ready for, for um, 2021, which is going to be a much better year than 2020. I guarantee it. I guess I can do that. Cut that out of the tape, would you please? <laughs> we have people that come in and they work on the building. They change the light bulbs. They edge the, the yard so it looks good. They clean up trash in the back. They, you know, 
just this building continues to be available and open and we can see and we don't have to walk over a bunch of trash um, because we have volunteers that do that. And there are so many aspects of volunteerism. Um, the elders are volunteers. The deacons are volunteers. Um, everybody other than really four of us, myself, Jim, uh, Teresa, and Betty, everybody else is a volunteer. I added up that 94% of what goes on in this church is done by volunteers. And pretty soon, hopefully, it'll be, it'll drop down to 92%. I figure the staff that's on staff here, we do 2% each. I do 2%, Jim does 2%, um, Teresa does 2%, and when Betty gets back, she'll do her 2% as well. So not, right now, 94% of what's going on in this church is done by volunteers. That's amazing to me. That is really amazing. And I thank you very much for that. Online support. For one, the last two years, the bill that can't, comes due for our live stream and Facebook Live that we do every week so people on the internet can watch us while you are, all are here sit, watching us as well, that has been paid by an anonymous donor. That's amazing. That's an $800 bill right there. That, that the last, what, three, I lied, right, Brian? Three years, last three years has been anonymously paid. And that's wonderful because we have people all the way from Smithville to Hell's Kitchen, New York. Hi, Clint. Um, and everybody in between there, somebody watched from Hong Kong one time. Um, so that wouldn't happen if we didn't have the online support. We've got many people that are, well, not many, we need more. Anybody that would like to learn how to run the, run the uh, camera and run the sound, we'd love to have you. But we do have people every week that do that. That's our online support. But it's also the people that are actually sitting there take the time out to, to watch our service. Because it would be a, a futile. It would be of no good if nobody was watching for us to do it. Also, we do a Facebook Live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. I get on there, or my wife Tina gets on there. Tina's, Tina's doing the Fridays now because I took Friday off and, and trying to help uh, my granddaughter with her schooling. But um, we do that, Isabella. <laughs> um, she gave me, my, that's my granddaughter there too. She gave me a look like, he doesn't help me with my school. <laughs> anyway. Um, so we do that, and we have a wonderful group that gets together, and we do a devotion, and we talk about it, and then we play a silly game, and then we do prayers. But that's support. That supports me from online. It, it kind of gives me an opportunity to just be silly and, you know, and, do, and do fun stuff, and we have great, great conversation, and, and it, it's a lot of fun. And, and, and they support it as well. And, this whole online thing is just, we were, we, we were ahead of the game when COVID hit. We'd been doing live stream for two years. And then all of a sudden COVID hit, churches are shutting down. And, uh, you know, a lot of churches were, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? My buddy's Cliff's church, he, uh, they didn't have anything going on. So they were like, what, how, how are we going to handle this? So they, they do Facebook Live. Um, we do both. We do live stream and Facebook Live, which is, which, which works well, but just the support that we've all gotten. You know, all the comments that you're commenting on Facebook Live, and, you know, we're doing Facebook Live now, we'll get nice comments and this and this, or whatever Krista is posting on Facebook. You know, we get a lot of nice comments. Uh, that's great. This is cool. She does a great job. Thank you, Krista, for the Facebook, uh, keeping the Facebook and the, and the website up. Um, 
But uh, you guys are you guys are supporting this this uh, church family so well online, and I, I certainly appreciate that as well. See, I gave a little bit of it away. It definitely begins with E. Emotional support. I have gotten so much emotional support since May the 5th or March the 15th. That's the first week that we were completely shut down. I've gotten letters. I've gotten phone calls. I've gotten emails. I've gotten texts. And that's just for me. I mean, that, that, that's emotional support for me. I had a rough month not too long ago here in the church. I had a lot going on, and I had a lot in my mind, and I had a lot in my heart that was really hurting me bad. Where did I go? Where are you supposed to go if things like that are happening? You go to your elders, and that's where I went. I went to my elders, and, and, and the elders of this church took it upon themselves to ease some of that pain that I was going through. That was very, very beneficial for me, for one, and it was very relieving me for, uh, to me for another, and I appreciated that so much. Now, did, were they put in a situation where they weren't very comfortable? Probably. But they understood that we were all in the same boat with that situation, and, and it was handled wonderfully, and I, and I can't imagine... Uh, I, I, I will tell you now, if it weren't for the elders of this church, I would not be standing here right now. I would not be. So, emotional support. We're giving each other emotional support. Um, when we pray for one another, when people are sick and we pray for one another, when we, when we call one another to make sure you're doing okay, when we, when we get together... Um, you know, in, in small groups or whatever, and we're, we're just lifting each other up. We couldn't, we, I don't think, you know, this coronavirus thing has been very taxing on a lot of people. Yeah, financially, um, but mentally and emotionally and spiritually. This COVID-19 has just been attacking us you know, and, and then, you know, throw in the, the social injustice that we've experienced throughout the country. And, and then let's, let's throw in probably one of the biggest elections that we've are, we're ever going to be a part of. It's been very devastating on people. And it shows. It does show. If you're on Facebook at all, look at all the comments that are on Facebook. But this church family has been there for one another. This church family lifts one another up. Do we have different points of view about a lot of things? Sure we do. I think we've got a camp for each side of each issue, except social injustice. I don't think you can ever be, be for social injustice. But um, I know we have conservatives and liberals at the church. And I know we have people that think COVID might just disappear after November 3rd, and some of us, you know, think that, you know, it's a real thing. I hope it does disappear after November 3rd. I really hope it does. But your some emotional support that you've given one another is amazing. Now, how am I going to tie this into, you know what else I want to tell you? What I'm really thankful for as well is you allowing me to do this. <laughs> Does everybody know why I'm growing my hair in the back? I'm, I am going to grow 18 inches of hair. I'm going to cut it off and I'm going to donate it to a place called Share My Hair. And they make wigs for people that have cancer and, and, uh, um, and such, that have 
hair diseases. That's what I'm doing. I got to thinking one day, you know, the Bible says, get, you know, make your body a sacrifice. And I was like, well, how can I make my body a sacrifice? That's one way. Giving blood's another way. Becoming a donor, you know, an organ donor. You know, I, I can't, I don't really want to be an organ donor while I'm living. <laughs> but once I'm gone, you know, they can have anything they want. They're not going to want my liver. That's already pickled. But other than that, um, so I appreciate you allowing me to do that, to allow me to express myself in that manner to where I can be, a, I can feel like, at least I can feel like I'm being a sacrifice of some kind. Um, and then you know what? It's only hair. If you want to touch it, you can. It's only hair. Everybody's got some. Most of us do anyway. Um, so how was I going to work stewardship, and this is stewardship week as well, into all of this? Hopefully everybody got something that looks like this in the mail. This is your pledge card. Um, we mailed them out to probably, I think, this, most of the same people that got the, the uh, um, organ uh, yeah, ballots. So... And what what this is, is a pledge card, and you write down your name and and how much you'd like to pledge for 2021. Why is this important? Why is giving to the church important? Well, the pledge card is important because it gives our team an idea of how much we can make the budget for for next year. We want to have as close to a balanced budget as possible. Um, so I remember the first year that I was here, our budget was like $160,000, and we had 108 in pledges. And I'm like, boy, I'm glad I didn't look at that before I decided to, to uh, sign on here. But it wasn't an issue because this is a very giving church. And not everybody fills out a pledge card, and I understand that. But it gives us an idea of what we can expect to come in next, uh, next year so we can budget. E- each committee can make their own budget. We can put it all together and we can, uh, we can go from there. What's most important about uh, pledging for next year and the giving that we've had for this year and the giving that we've had for this year has been amazing. You hear me talking about, you talk about it every week. I'm not surprised that this church family is as generous with their financial donations as they are. I'm not surprised, but I am amazed. There are churches that are going under because people are sitting at home watching it on the internet, but they're not, but they're not giving to, the, to God. They're not giving to God. I, and I don't, know, I, I don't know why, but they're not. But none of this here, none of this can happen without stewardship and the outreach of course is uh is obvious you know uh, cis church and society committee um, you know i don't know if you guys know this but 10 percent of everything that we um, take in in tithes and offerings 10 percent we tithe back to the community in some form or fashion so you know the, the bible says you know give 10% of your uh, first fruits, that's what, that's what we do. We, we believe in that. Um, now, I'm not, I'm, if, if, you, if you've ever heard me during stewardship week, I am not a pusher of the 10%. I will bring it up every now and again, like I am now. But, you know, what you give to God is between you and God. It's not between me, you, and God. It's not between Blaine, you, and God. It's between you and God. I don't know how much you give, and I don't want to know how much you give. Doesn't you know? That's because that's between you and God. I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to know. So, but the outreach that we do is because of the continuous gen- generosity of this church family financially. That's how we. That's that's how. You know, CIS can give me a discretionary fund, 
And when Julian or, or one of the other homeless people come by and say, you know, I'd, I'd really like, you know, can I get a night stay or it's raining or it's cold or it's whatever, can I get a night stay? Um, I take them over to Westbridge and we can do that. We can get them a nice, uh, you know, a night stay. You know, and if you think about it, not only is that a, a bed that they can sleep in for a night, it's also a shower. I don't know if you've ever been homeless, but a shower after two or three months feels wonderful. And then you can put on hopefully some clean clothes and, and you know, that'll hold you for a while. So the outreach, of course, through our giving, through our stewardship, is a given. Volunteers. See, people think of, when they think of um, steward, or stewardship, they think, oh, you know, Pastor Tim's going to you know, reach out and grab my wallet while I'm not looking, because that's what he's after, money. And that's not true. Because stewardship not only is financial, but it's time as well. People giving time. You give time to God. And this church family is extremely good at giving time to God. Um, we would not have volunteers if people, of course, if people weren't willing to volunteer. And then the staff here would be doing 94% of the work and the volunteers would do 6%. That would probably go over for a while, but it wouldn't go over for very long. So... You know, stewardship is not only money, but it's also time as well. Online support. Well, like I said before, we wouldn't even have the live stream or the Facebook Live if it weren't for people giving their resources. Not only their financial resources to pay for it, but, you know, learning to run it being a part of that. Dan, is a, Dan Wallace is a huge part of our AV team. Um, you know, like he said this morning, for some reason the email didn't go from the secretary's desk to the, uh, to the thing back here, and so he was back there typing away, making a, uh, a, a PowerPoint presentation. And, uh, but that's okay. I mean, is that okay, Dan? I don't know, I don't wanna speak for Dan. <laughs> but that's okay because you know what goes on in this church? There's a lot of grace. God blesses us with a lot of grace. And sure, you guys didn't get to read the, the um, call to worship this week. That's okay. We got it read. And it's nobody's fault because there's so much grace in this church that you cannot make a mistake at Clinton Christian Church where grace does not cover you. So, so we have the online support, um, people that are willing to do it. Um, the young disciples moment. You know, for a while, Tina and I were, were recording those in our, in our family room at home, and then, but we got uh, some other people involved. Well, how does that work? How, do we, how, do, how does Andy Englehart get his video from his phone to... Tina's phone, so Tina can put it up on Facebook. Yeah, it took us a while to figure it out. You know, Gina's done one. Uh, Carol Hinton's done one. Uh, Andy's done a couple. Um, who am I missing? Bree did one, you know. So we're getting more people involved. Yeah, volunteers. And plus online support. And that wouldn't be available, you know, if we didn't understand, well, I don't understand the technology, if some of us didn't understand the technology and were, are willing to work for it, and once again, that's just a, a, an aspect of, of stewardship. Emotional support's huge. It's huge. I don't know if anybody's uh, suffered from depression. I think we've all felt down before. You know what I heard on the news the other day? Alcohol sales throughout the uh, United States, way up. People that have been sober, clean and sober for years, back at it. 
we've got an issue in this country. But you guys are so good at being there for one another, not judging one another. If this was a judging church family, you would have made me hit the road a long time ago. Because I am far from perfect. Many of you got me beat, hands down. But that's okay. Grace, and I've got a church family that allows me to walk with them in the, in the relationship with Jesus Christ. And I thank you for that. So what I guess I'm trying to say is, this is just a part of stewardship. Um, but we do ask that to, if you're going to pledge, if you will fill this out, and you should have gotten an, a self-addressed stamped envelope, and you can send it back to us, or you can bring it here. And what we're going to do is we're having Celebration Sunday on November 1st. That's when we'd like to have them all in so we can go ahead and work on our budget and get that taken care of. Um, nobody but the financial secretary gets to see these. So, and the financial secretary doesn't particularly pay attention to who it is and what it is. It's, it's, so this is between you and God. But November 1st, what we'll do is we'll, we'll put them all in a bucket or something and we'll say, uh, we'll dedicate them to God. And we will uh, do that and we will go on. And I want to thank you ahead of time. But what I want to say is um, the ability to do outreach, all the volunteers, and each and every one of you are a volunteer here. It doesn't matter what you do, where you do it, who, who you do it with. You all are a volunteer here. Those that support us online and those that uh, give emotional support to their church family and especially to me, I want to appreciate it. And here's what I want to say to you all. I just want to say thank you very much from the middle of my heart. Amen. Okay, let's do our birthdays. Marilyn, did you have a good birthday? Yes. Marilyn, uh, five of us went over, drove over to Marilyn's house and uh, uh, sang her happy birthday and took her some balloons, and then I got to go in and visit with her for a while on her birthday, and that was nice. Hey. So, today is the 19th. No, I lied, it's the 18th. Um, on the 21st, Beverly Brown's birthday is the 21st. Mr. Brian Hetherington is having a birthday. He's on sound today. He's on the 21st. And Dan Wallace, he is on the 22nd. So if you guys want to wish them a happy birthday, send them a card, send them a text, send them an email. Um, go over to their house and sing to them. You're more than welcome to do that. Um, happy birthday, you guys. And then we have a couple of anniversaries this week. Paul and Ruth Few and Howard and Mary. No, what's today? 18th, 25th. Yeah, Howard and Mary Cup are this week, so on the 24th. 20th, Paul and Ruth Few and Howard and Mary on the 24th. So um, send them a card or something about their anniversary, and we just want to say happy anniversary to you all. I think I would imagine both of those couples are watching today. Youth group met last Sunday. Did it go well? Did it go well? Awesome. Well, we had signed up to do it once a month. And the kids voted to do it twice every other week. So that's awesome. That's good. Uh, Mr. Pat Riley here 
has stepped up to lead that group, and uh, we appreciate that. There again, another volunteer effort. We appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Cake mixes. We had four cake mixes for the longest time. And now we have, Betty, how many did you bring? 12? We're up to 139. 139 cake mixes. So we need 550. We're, we're well on our way. So um, if you, like I said before, if you want to buy cake mixes, you're more than welcome to do that. If you don't want to bring them to the church, Call me, I'll come by and at your house as long as you don't live in like Raytown or something. Well, if you live in Raytown, I'll pick them up on the way here. But, um, you know, if you don't live in Springfield or anything like that. Um, well, I, I, I take that back. If you're going to drive from Springfield to come to church on Sunday morning, I'm going to come pick them up. Okay, now our prayer list. We got quite a prayer list here. Um, please pray for Kit and Sarah Anderson and the entire um, Anderson family for their loss of uh, Ted. Um, I did attend the memorial service on Friday, um, and I did get to talk to Kit for a while. He's, he's pretty broken up about the, the loss of Ted, and, and Sarah came over and gave me a big hug, and, and I told him, uh, you know, if they need anything, just let the church know, and we'll be more than happy to do anything we can for them. But uh, it was a nice service. It was a nice service, well attended, probably over 100 people there. It was, uh, it was very well attended. So um, just, just keep uh, Kit and Sarah in your prayers. Um, we're, we're continuing to pray for uh, Renee Bancroft's mom. She had some surgery a while back. She's doing much better, according to Renee. She still can't lift as much as she should or w wants to. So there, she still has some limitations. So continue to... Pray for uh, Renee's mom as well. Of course, we continue to pray for Caroline Wilson as she receives treatment for her leukemia. Um, keep Don Goslin in your prayers. Don is uh, uh, having uh, dialysis done three times a week. Um, so uh, just continue to keep Don in your prayers. And if you'd like to send him a note or, or something, I'm sure he'd appreciate it. And we continue to pray for Bob Brown and Beverly Brown. And I've got a Bob Brown. He was supposed to have a stent removed last Monday. They did not remove the stent. Um, they don't, they're, they're not exactly sure why they didn't reserve, remove the stent. They didn't understand what the uh, doctors were saying or didn't quite get the whole gist of it. But they did not remove the stent. Um, he is scheduled to have another kidney stone removed this Thursday. And they're going to remove the stent on Thursday too. If that, yeah. So they're going to remove the stent on Thursday and they're going to remove another kidney stone on Thursday. So continue to keep Bob in your prayers. Um, their son Chris, he is back in chemo at MD Anderson. So keep uh, you know, their son Chris in your prayers. They have a granddaughter in Kansas City that has two tumors that are to be removed. So pray for their granddaughter in Kansas City. And they have a great granddaughter that broke their leg playing volleyball. So it's been a busy week for the Browns. Um, they are watching. They always watch. Uh, Bob and Beverly, we are praying desperately for you and your family. Charlotte Anderson had surgery last Friday, and it went well. Actually, Charlotte called me this morning to tell me that she's doing well. She cannot drive for a week, um, and she is very limited in what she uh, is able to do. Um, but she did want to make sure that I said thank you to everyone in, their, in her church family that uh, uh, prayed for her. So um, she loves this church family, and... Uh, She's, she's doing well. She's doing very well. So, um, Tina, my wife Tina, just got back from uh, Branson West. She spent uh, about four days with her dad and her stepmom. They were ill. They're still not feeling too good, but they both tested negative for COVID. 
Um, so continue to keep um, her dad, Bill, and her stepmom, Sharon, in our prayers. And continue to pray for Tina. Tina's been sick as well, and she's got, finally got a doctor's appointment Tuesday that I think she's going to be able to make, and maybe we can get her straightened out. Um, Lisa Wallace, as you notice, she's not here today. She's not feeling well. She's got a little stomach issue, so pray for Lisa as well. Um, Dixie's son, Kent, we've been praying for Kent um, on uh, Facebook Live. He did have a COVID test, and it came back negative. Um, yeah. I've got on here, ask Dixie how Kent's doing, but Dixie did. Okay. Kent is, feel, Kent is feeling better. Hopefully he'll be back soon cutting hair. And Dixie's had some, uh, some health issues that uh, she went to go see the doctor. So can keep uh, Dixie in your prayers as well. Um, my brother Scott, he was supposed to have uh, knee surgery on Tuesday. And it's been postponed until mid-November. Um, I don't think any of you know my brother Scott well but he's not a happy camper he's in a lot of pain and when he's not a happy camper he's not much fun to be around I like the rest of us um, so keep my brother Scott in your prayers and his wife Cindy okay since I um, presided over Carol's memorial service, the gal that passed away from my class, um, I am getting many updates on um, people from my class. 1982, Raytown South High School. Um, we had a gentleman, Marlon, passed away. Keep Mar uh, Marlon's family in your prayer. A gal named Kim, her mom, passed away. Keep her family in her prayer. And a gal named Susan, her brother, passed away. And keep their, their family in your prayers as well. Um, I always say that I will uh, pray, and if it's, and I ask them, is it okay to, to lift you up in prayer at, in Sunday worship? And they always say yes. They know we are a praying church, and that is, isn't that one of our goals? We want to pray. We don't, we don't just pray for our church family. We pray for everybody. Um, God knows what's going on. He just wants to hear our hearts. He wants to hear our prayers. Um, continue to keep uh, all of our church family in your prayers. I saw um, Carol Hinton and Chuck Hinton at the memorial service for Ted Anderson. Got to talk to them. They seem to be doing very well. I know uh, uh, Chuck and Kit were very good friends. Um, as you can see, I, I mentioned this last week that the organ has been permanently installed over here. And um, so Jim doesn't have to walk back and forth and... Uh, which is awesome, and this is Jim's first week back on it, so I'm excited to see what kind of uh, gadgets and gizmos that this new organ has and how Jim's going to be able to use them. It was, it was also brought to my attention this morning, and it, somebody else has, you know, two or three people have mentioned it in the past. If you remember correctly, every first Sunday of the month before COVID hit, we were collecting change for the animal shelter. We called it Kids for Change, and we had kids walk around with uh, tin cans, you know, and everybody gave them their change. And it was, it was going over great. The kids were having a good time, and, and you, of course, were donating uh, great, greatly. So what we're going to do starting next week is we're just going to have a bucket sitting back on the table. And uh, since we don't really have kids that uh, come to collect the money, we're just going to have a bucket back there, and you can bring your change anytime you, know, anytime you want to. Um, we're going to have that back there every Sunday, because I know the animal shelter is really hurting for donations at this point in time, just like most, most organizations are. And so that's a great way to support it, and, uh, and looking forward to seeing how much change we can collect. Now remember, you know, a $50 bill... It's change when you're getting change from 100, so I don't even know what that means. Do we have any others that you'd like to share with the congregation? Any celebrations, any prayer requests?
I'm sorry, did you raise your hand? No, I'm just kidding. Close enough. This is for being a great pastor from the Sunday class. This is for being a great pastor from the Sunday class. And it's got my name on it. I guess it's for me. And I'm going to say that this is... Uh, It's a what? Praise. It's a praise. Do you mind if I read it? No. All right. Your ministry is making a difference. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. That's from John uh, 15, 8, for those of you that are keeping score. Just wanted to make sure you knew how appreciated you are, not only for all you do, but for who you are, a reflection of the one you serve. And it's got a nice, a bunch of nice little, everybody signed it. Isn't that nice? Thank you very much. And uh, looks like there's a gift in here as well. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate it. That's uh, unnecessary, but very much appreciated. Thank you very much. You guys got this, that's, a, that's an apostrophe S. On the sign. You guys got confused there. But thank you. And thank you for bringing that up. Would you like to make a speech? You would, wouldn't you? You would. <laughs> Anybody else have any uh, prayer requests or any celebrations that you'd like to share? Um, Linda? Yes. Had a deer kick him? Wow, eight weeks. Yeah. Okay. Um, that is your nephew that got kicked by a deer when he was on a motorcycle. Okay. Broke his femur, which is the biggest bone in your body and the hardest to break, I would imagine. And he's going to be laid up. He's out of surgery, doing, doing okay from the surgery, I'm assuming. Yeah. But laid up for eight weeks. My goodness. Um, so, and what, I'm sorry, what was his first name? Laramie? Laramie. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm having trouble hearing. Laramie Lafarge. So keep Laramie in your prayers. Wow, that's too bad. Who else? Anybody else? Nope. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, it seems as though the list of prayer requests just continues to get larger and larger every week, God. You know those that are in need. You know those that are in want. You know those that are grieving. You know those that are hurting. But God, to hear it from our hearts is uh, what your son Jesus Christ told us to do. Pray to the Lord. And we are lifting all of these people up to you today. Um, those that have lost loved ones, be with them as they grieve. Um, be in their hearts to let them know that you are there. Grieving is a, is a process that we all go through at one point in time. And uh, God, we just ask that you um, give them comfort. Um, be with those that are sick and uh, that are hurt, that uh, went through surgery, Charlotte went through surgery, Laramie went through surgery. Just be with them as they go through the healing process. Um, be with those that are sick. Um, keep them safe from the coronavirus and heal their bodies as we ask you to do so. God, we, we thank you for the celebrations that we've shared. The, the youth group um, continues to uh, um, grow and thrive, and we thank you for that. Um, thank you for the placement of the organ. And God, I just want to um, personally thank you for bringing me to this church family. Uh, I have been so blessed in my life that I just want to say thank you personally. 
be with the starfish, those names on the starfish that we wrote. My goodness, it's been almost two years ago um, that we continue to pray for them, that you would uh, lift them up and uh, either start, help them start a relationship with your son, Jesus Christ, or that you would um, renew and build a relationship with your son, Jesus Christ. Pray for this church family. Pray for this city, this county, this state, the country, and the world as we try to weave our way through the coronavirus and other aspects of our lives. Um, God, thank, thank you for church family and the ability to walk side by side with each and every one of us. We pray all this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. We love you and we thank you. Amen. I told you we'd get this service done before the Chiefs played. So you'll be out of here by 3.30 tomorrow easily. <laughs> Once again, I say thank you much for the tithes and offerings that you offer up to God through this church. It allows us to do so many things. Um, once again, I am not surprised, but I am amazed. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give back just a portion of the blessings that you've bestowed upon us in our lives. May you use these resources, guide us in using these resources to do your work here in Clinton and throughout the world. We ask that you bless these gifts and the givers that gave them. We pray all this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. We love you and we thank you. Amen. Let us now hear the doxology. Did everyone pick up their prepackaged communion on the way in? If not, uh, we can get some to you. For those of you that are new to us, it does have two tabs on the top. One is cellophane, the other one is, uh, I don't know, metal of some kind. Um, the top one reveals the bread, the bottom one reveals the juice. And the reason I tell you that, I don't know if you guys remember, it took me like three weeks to figure out that there were two, two tabs on here. I was pulling a big one off and trying to get the bread out of there. So um, I do that more to remind me that there's two tabs as opposed to uh, reminding you. Um, and what we've been doing during communion is we've been taking the bread individually. I will say the words of institution over the bread and we'll take those individually. But then I will do the words of institution over the, over the cup, and we drink the cup together. We take the bread individually to remind us that our relationship with Jesus Christ is an individual relationship. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. We drink the juice together as a reminder that we are church family. We are not randomly here. We are family, and we are here to do God's work to be his hands and his feet. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come to your son Jesus Christ during this time of communion. Um, we thank you for the sacrifice of giving your one and only son, and we thank Jesus for um, being will willing to be tortured 
be nailed to a cross to die for our sins. And we thank you for the resurrection of him to overcome evil and death. We thank you for the bread that resembles his body that was broken for us. Thank you for the juice that represents his blood that was poured out for forgiveness of our sins. We pray all this in your son's name, Jesus. We love you and we thank you. Amen. As you remember, the scriptures tell us that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he had a meal with his disciples. During that meal, he took a loaf of bread. And once he blessed it and gave thanks for it, he broke it, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, after the meal, Jesus took the cup, and once he had filled it, he passed it amongst his disciples, saying, This is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. This is the new covenant in my blood. Drink of it, all of you, and we shall drink together. And we will continue to eat of the bread and drink of the cup until Jesus has promised his promise to return is fulfilled. Amen. Those of you that joined us on the internet, I appreciate you. Thank you for being with us today, and thank you for being a part of this church family. It doesn't matter whether you're a member here or not at this church. Once you are involved with this church, you are a member of the church family, whether you like it or not. And all of you that joined us here today, thank you for being here. I appreciate you immensely. I know... I say it, I, I've said it a lot today that I appreciate you, but I hope I say it more each and every day because each and every day I feel blessed to be a part of this church family. And it is our call as well to tell those in our lives, thank you and that you appreciate them. You know, we do have a day called Thanksgiving that's coming up every day as followers of God should be Thanksgiving Day. Now let us all go out and find the great in everyone, including yourself. Amen. We ask that you do wear your mask out, please.